Hi everyone, welcome to the Wednesday class. Great to be back um, after a week and what a lot is happening in the world. I don't know if there's anyone from the USA is tuning in, but we're all looking at the election results, um, just keeping our fingers crossed there. And we've had quite a few members uh, messaging us about that. So our thoughts are with you there. Um, so please say hi in the chat. Here we go, there we go. This is the first to post, please say hi in the chat. Lynn from West London. Who's going to be next? And Kim. Hi, Kim. Okay, so let's get on with the class. Um, and uh, we're going to, I thought today we've got a really amazing point of the week. We've got one of the most powerful points in the head area. So I thought as we're going to finish up with working on the head and everything, we'll start off by connecting heaven and earth. And we're going to do an exercise on tuning in to see how grounded we are or whether we're, we've got too much um, too much energy down, too much energy up. We'll just find out where the group is. It's always worth checking in every now and then. Then we'll do the three burner scan and then we'll be uh, ready to, to um, balance out yin and yang, heaven and earth connection. Okay, so we're going to do a slightly different scan today uh, before we do the three, the three burner scan. I've got my piece of paper and my clipboard right ready here so we'll let's get straight on and uh, do the initial scan okay so here we go we are first of all just standing relaxing and before we do anything else before we actually direct our uh, awareness anywhere let's just figure out um, where we're actually at in terms of connecting between heaven and earth. Okay, so what we're looking for, looking for is, are we feeling too heavy and kind of sinking down like this, losing that connection with the heavens connection, or are we, have we lost our grounding and are we a bit like this, floating about like that? So what we're gonna do is just assess how we are right now in terms of that. So we're just tuning into our whole body energy and then just extend our awareness up and down. Just see what's the easiest way to go when you put your attention that way. Is it easy to go like this or is it easy to go like that? And that gives you an idea of how our connection is with heaven and earth. And that yin yang connection is really, really fundamental. So let's just tune in for a second. Okay, I've got mine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw mine here. We're gonna draw an overall picture of whether we feel we're going ah, up or big man. Okay, so I'm gonna do my overall picture. And then we're gonna do the three burner scan that's how I'm feeling today. Look, I really need the Wednesday class as always, but look, um, <laughs> I'm just gonna put that aside and put another piece of paper to do the three burner scan. So we've got the three burners. Just need a simple right chart like that. And then what we'll do is we'll scan through the three burners and then we'll do the drawing at the end. Okay, so first of all, just standing, just gonna stand, relax. Okay, let's do it a little bit differently today. What I'm going to get you, what I'm going to get us to do all together, is we're going to first of all just relax and see if we can tune into all of the three areas together. So we've got lower, middle, and upper. Just to remind you, the lower burner is here below the navel, the middle burner is below the diaphragm and above the navel, and the upper burner is the whole lungs and heart area. So now, if we just concentrate on that whole, on those three areas all at once which one kind of pops out? Which one do you notice the most? Which is the one that's kind of like signaling to you the most? And that's kind of the loudest one that you're gonna uh, feel. It could be maybe feeling hot or a little bit blocked or something like that. Okay, so we're gonna pick the first one. Okay, and that's the one we're gonna work on, the one that needs the most attention. Okay, the one that's, you know, shouting the loudest but now let's go to the second one and that could be 
either of the other two um, after you've chosen your first. So you've got your first choice. Okay, I know what mine is, <laughs> but it's going to be individual to you. So we've got our first choice. Now, tuning into the second one, what's that like? Okay, got that. So we've got the first choice, second choice, and now the third choice which is very interesting, by the way, because the third one is not the one that's shouting the loudest, but it's the one that's the quietest. And it may be that that quiet one is the one that actually needs nurturing. And we're going to find that out as we go through the session today. So what we're doing, if you're into shiatsu, uh, if you're a shiatsu therapist, you'll know about kyo and jitsu or full and empty. And so what we're doing here is we're just noticing the most obvious thing, and then we're checking out the quiet ones, because sometimes it's tonifying those quiet areas that can cause the biggest change, but we'll find out individually today, all right? So we've got our first choice, we've got our second choice, and now I'd like you to tune into your third choice and get a feeling for what that's like. So I'm gonna do the same thing myself. Okay. And now scanning back through those three burners, through those three areas, how would you draw them? What would they be like if you drew them? Okay, so you see we're doing it slightly differently this week. We're, we're going for the one that's most noticeable. Instead of just going up or down and just looking at each in turn, we're actually focusing in. We've been doing it for quite a few years now. Um, we should be good enough to just, should be able to just tune into all three and rank them first, second, and third, okay? So now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do my drawing here. I'm gonna number it, one, two, and three. And now I'm drawing in why I chose that burner as the first one. Okay, so I'm just going to put some notes here. Okay. Actually, I'm not going to show you this time quite well. I'm not going to show you yet anyway, because I don't want it to influence the polls. So if we've got two polls to do now, we've got are you feeling too up or too down? And then which burner do you most want to work on? And that's where we're going to choose to see which one um, we chose out of those three burners. So let me just um, uh, find the polls. Dinah's on the chat. Hi, Dinah. Um, I'm just trying to find the poll. We've got so many now. I've got to go through them all and see if I can find. Um... Oh, yeah, here we go. Is your energy too up, too down, or about right? Okay, so I'm going to share that poll now. Let's have a look. Is it too up, too up, a little bit too up, about balanced, too down, or very much too down? And this is an interesting one because every now and then, every few weeks, or probably every couple of months, we check in on the group and we've had some very interesting changes in this uh, over the over the last two and two and a half years um so if you just like to um vote on that poll and we'll see where we are okay now look this is really interesting isn't it look and i think that's probably an indication of the stress that's around at the moment is that there's definitely a lack of grounding there in the group we've actually only got 17 people 17 percent i should say who are feel too down, and most of the group, by a, quite a long way, long way, are favouring more reporting that they're fe feeling a bit too up and too ungrounded. So let's figure out which burner we'd like to work on, and then we can work on that. Okay, which burner do you want to work on most today? And that, so that's your. Um, and again, we've, this is something that's changed a lot over the um, over the months and years that we've been doing this class. Wow, if you'd like to just keep voting, because it looks like the middle burner is taking a massive lead suddenly, which breaks with a pattern that we've had over several months where the upper burner has been way out in front. Now, usually when you've got middle burner, in middle burner um, structure, it's usually because there's some kind of emotional stuff stuck there uh, that needs working on. Okay, so we've got a distinct pattern there, everyone, in the group, a distinct tendency here for the energy to go up, Woods, 
and also for the middle burner to be the most popular burner, which is very handy for me personally, because when if you see my energy is definitely a little bit too far up there. And when I numbered my burners, look, number one middle burner comes out. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Just what I needed. Okay. <laughs> of course, because all the burners are connected, we'll find that we should get an overall balancing effect, no matter what you voted. But let's see how we get on. Okay. And the interesting thing is also, if I look here, the other interesting thing is that the lower and the upper burners are relatively low in the ranking. And what that indicates is they could need, because they could need tonification. So what we're going to do today is we'll, first of all, focus on getting that feeling of groundedness. We're going to strengthen up the lower burner, because it's only with a strong lower burner that we can really effectively move or work on the middle burner. Okay, so let's just see how we get on with that. Okay, time to start. Excellent. So I think what we'll do first of all is we'll start off with some, um, a little bit of shaking just to move a bit of chi in the whole body. And then we'll really need to strengthen up the lower burner and see if we can get that to be really grounded, get that connection with the earth. And then from there we'll work up and we'll release that middle burner. Okay, so first of all, just standing. I'm going to open up kidney one, just, I'm just doing about moving my feet like this and moving my feet, opening them like this, rolling my feet around. Okay. Open up kidney one, feel that connection down into the earth. Okay, so now what we're exploring is that feeling of connection with the earth and the connection with the lower burner. So let's just check that out, and then what we'll do is we'll work on kidney one, and we'll see if we can kind of turbocharge that feeling of connection downwards. So here we go. We're gonna place our hand over the lower burner here, the Dantian, keeping the shoulders relaxed, keep that egg underneath the armpit there. Okay, and we take some nice, easy breaths. Breathing in. And see how easy it is to get your breath down into this lower dantian. We're just going to do two or three breaths and see how easy it is to get that breath down. Okay, now let's just become aware of that breath coming down through the body, through the upper and the middle burner into the lower dantian. Okay, can you feel that, how easily it's going down? Now, we're going to do two things now, and I'd like you to track and see how much difference that makes to how easy it is to get our energy down into the lower burner. We're going to do some shaking to move some obstruction, and then we're going to work kidney one to increase the yin of the body. And let's just see how much difference that makes. Okay, so first of all, let's do some shaking. We're going to keep that head floating upwards, keep the feet connected to the earth, and we're going to relax the shoulders. What we're going to do is we're going to do just some gentle shaking through the whole body. But we're going to focus in on the upper burner first of all, so I'm shaking out here, I'm shaking this way as well, opening up lung one. And then we're going to shake down into the diaphragm and into the middle burner. I'm just going to let the whole, all the uh, internal organs just move around a little bit, just get that nice and released. We're shaking any tension we have out the body. Let's go back to the jaw here to open up the jaw, get that really relaxed. Relaxing the neck, shaking down, shaking out through the hands, shaking the middle burner. Relaxing the hips. Okay, 
relaxing at ease, and the ankles are feet. Okay, very good. A little bit more, maybe a little bit twisting, getting that whole middle bone released. Okay, very good. So now let's check in again and see whether that's made any difference. Again, opening up kitty one, floating the head up, relaxing the shoulders, breathing in. Okay, bring the breath down again into Dantian. Now check in with yourself and see, has that made a big difference? If it's made a big difference, it could be that the middle bird of stagnation is stopping that breathing, stopping that lower uh, burner getting activated, okay? If it's not made much difference and you can just still feel about the same, it could be because the middle burner is not really the massive issue for you. It might be that you're going to get more power from working kidney one. So we're going to check in on that right now. Get the chair ready to work on kidney one. There we go. Okay, so here we are. Just oh. It's a bit cold today, take my socks off, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so let's get that kidney one. Remember where it is, it's down the midline of the foot, one third of the distance from the top here, down to the heel, right there, okay? And we're going to open it up. <laughs> First of all, open it up. Okay, now here's a little hint. If you did feel a lot of change with shaking the middle burner, you could have some liver stagnation there. And so what I'm doing here is I'm actually stretching out and opening between the big toe and the second toe, because that's where the liver channel runs. As you know, liver three is right there. It's a really good point for liver stagnation. So if that's an issue with you, I'm just massage in there and pressing in around this area here, it's ideal, okay? But the main reason we're down here, as you know, is to work on kidney one. So I'm gonna tap here, right on, Right in there. Tapping to activate kidney one, pressing in, stretching the foot, open, and my fingers are right in there. Kidney one opening that up, stretching it out. And then, of course, we can go through into kidney three, which is right here, just behind the ankle, right there, the reason where my thumb is, right there. Okay, and we can tap up this one. So we're going from kidney one towards kidney three. We're opening up that early part of the channel. Right, very good. Excellent. Other foot, same thing. Opening out, stretching liver three area, opening that up, pressing in here. And then tapping. There we go. Oh, brilliant. Just a little bit more, I think. Okay, so that's our kidney one activated. And the big thing now is to see whether that's made more difference than the shaking to your breathing pattern. Because if it has done, that indicates that you could be, you might need a bit more kidney power, you might need a bit more yin connection. Quite a lot of us voted for their energy two up. So there's a pretty good chance that it's gonna make a pretty big difference to how your breathing operates in your body, okay? So, but let's try it and see what happens, okay? So we're shaking out again. Bit of a shake. And then hands over the lower dantian, and you can feel that kidney one really activated now, really nice and open and energized. 
you probably feel it up through the ankles as well and you might feel it connecting up into the lower than chin very good so now we're relaxing and the big moment what's it going to be like when we take a breath in here we go so we're going to breathe in okay very good and holding the breath now if you feel a bit more solid now you find it easier to bring the breath down it indicates that you really need to work on that yin connection with the earth if you felt more of a release when we did shaking then that's again an indication that there's probably obstruction stopping that breath going down it's really important to get that lower abdominal breath going with the long exhalations because it's central to regulating the nervous system to get that breathing diaphragmatic breathing really solid there okay what a great start okay so let's just act now we can just activate the kidney chunk a little bit more to get that really to get that really um working well we can also do is we can use the middle burner uh, channels to start working on that middle burner as well so we've got this energized here so what i suggest we do today because we've got that middle burner emphasis is to actually start off immediately with doing tapping those middle burner um, meridians and what we'll do is then switch and activate the kidney meridian so are you with me okay so we're going to start off with the stomach channel we're going to start off around here around either side of the navel it's a really important point just around here Summer 25, really important point for the digestion and middle burner generally. Just going to tap gently around that point there. Just to give you a close up, that's from the navel here. Where's my navel? <laughs> it's there. I go out like that and then just start tapping there. And then from there, we just go up, connect with the middle burner. This is the stomach channel we're on right now. Okay, down. And then we can pick up the stomach channel on the outside of the legs going down towards the feet. We're going to tap it down here. While we're doing that, we're keeping that kidney one open, keeping that connection with the earth. And we go down. Stomach 36, very important point for the energy of the body and for regulating the middle burner through the spleen and stomach. We go down onto the feet and then come up the spleen channel, which is on the inside of the legs, through the knees, up here, and then come back around to say here. Yeah. So we go down. Now this downward movement down the stomach channel is very good for calming the digestion down, releasing any anxiety that you might have. Really useful. And go all the way down, connecting down into the earth. And then coming back up, the spleen channel holds our energy up, keeps us in an upright position, and it basically again brings energy back into the digestive system. Okay, so we've got calming and grounding, releasing anxiety, and strengthening the digestion, keeping us upright. That's the function of those channels. Very good. So that's a really good start there. And uh, let's just tune in again to how we're feeling, opening up that kidney one, feeling the middle burner. Okay, so now it's the big one for the middle bone, the liver and the gallbladder, really important for keeping that chi flowing. Um, and uh, we're going to start off here, liver 13, just by the floating rib. We're going to tap up to just underneath the nipples here. This is um, liver 14, so we've got this movement here, very important part of the liver channel. And then we're going to go down. About the 30, right in the hip here, right in behind the, right in the gluteal muscles here. We've got all about a 30, really important for releasing the, the hips and stagnation of the hips. And then we go down the outside of the legs. Just nice and gently down to the outside of the legs and then up the inside of the legs. That's the liver channel. Then we go back up here and then we end up back liver 13 and 14. Down we go. Liver 13. Down. And liver. Okay, 
Okay, very good. One more to pass down, one more to go. Your bladder. And the liver. Excellent. Okay, and that circuit completes those all the channels that relate directly to the middle burner. We've got stomach, spleen, gallbladder, and liver on the inside. So it's time to shake those hips out. And then finally, let's just activate the kidney channel and just see then if we can, again, breathe a little bit uh, easier and get that balance between yin and yang sorted out. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna come down. We're gonna pick up the kidney channel just behind the ankle, gently tapping up the inside of the legs. This is the kidney channel, the inside back of the legs. And it comes around here and there's actually a point just above the pubic bone here. And then we can go around, pick up the bladder channel on the sacrum, go down, back to the legs, down to the ankles again. And then we've, we've completed a circuit. Go back up again. Okay. Kidney, bladder, kidney. Okay, very good, shaking out. Okay, one more exercise we can do for the middle burner is a lovely twisting exercise. Really useful to do to keep that middle burner flowing. So let's get that kidney one connected down into the earth. Get the head top floating up. We're looking at the horizon, opening the eyes, <laughs> and we're following the horizon with the eyes Turn like this. Okay, all the while we're doing this, we're keeping that feeling of releasing in the middle burner and keeping that kidney one connected down into the earth. Okay, and again, it depends on how much stagnation you feel you've got here. If you've got a lot and you want to really you can do this tapping the sides. This is a good way of making it a bit stronger. Or if you're feeling a bit tired and weak in that area, then you want to keep it nice and gentle and just breathe into the breathe into the middle burner. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now it's checking in time. Let's see how that breathing um, how that breathing is working now. So let's remind ourselves, we've got kidney one nice and open. We've got the kidney channel zinging away there. Okay. We've got that nice feeling down the legs, the front and the sides of the legs, that's the stomach and the liver and gallbladder meridians. And notice that your legs now feel so much more solid and so much more grounded and connected down into the earth. And that's the power of those middle burner leg channels. So let's see what it's like to breathe in now. I'll drop my hands together. Place my hands on the lower dantian again. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, keeping that kidney one awareness down into the earth. And then let's just take a nice, easy breath in, bringing the breath as low as we can down into the dantian. Okay, got that? And then holding it and breathing out. Okay, now you'll probably feel two things happening. One is the legs feel so much more solid and they're connected to the earth. And you may also start to get that feeling of calmness coming into the mind. And that's because your yin is being connected to the earth. We're getting that nice, healthy connection with the earth, which is what we needed as a group, which will tend to calm down the mind, will bring the whole nervous, regula nervous system regulation down into a calmer uh, kind of place there. So let's just enjoy another one of those breaths, keeping that kidney one open, keeping that solid feeling in the legs, relaxing the upper body and breathing in. Nice long exhalation, just becoming aware of the legs and the connection with the earth. Very nice. Okay, very good. So now we've tonified up the lower burner, we've connected it with the kidney channel, we've released the middle burner. 
So now we can work, work up onto the upper burner now, which is this area here. Um, and then once we've done that, then we can do some work on the yang channels and we can have point of the week. Okay, so we are now almost at the end of our epic one year journey around the meridians. Um, and we've just got another three weeks, or three, three or four weeks, November with the cool bladder channel, which just goes down here. And then we'll finally work on the liver channel in December, and that will bring us right around the full cycle of the whole 12 meridian cycle. Okay, so it's been an amazing journey. So now let's work a little bit on the upper burner. We've got the lower burner nicely solid, got the legs really solid today, nicely connected with the earth. So that should provide a lot of space here for the upper burner um, for us to get that nice and regulated. What we're looking for in the upper bone is a nice feeling of coolness, moistness, and certainly no congestion, no obstructions, and stuff like that. Okay, so let's just do a couple of stretches and see where we are at with the upper burner. We're going to do this stretch. This is a pericardium stretch. We'll bring the hands together, breathe in, breathe out, and go back like that. Okay, now as we go into the stretch, what we're looking for is if there's any tightness around this part of the body here, around there, because this is where all the connective tissue pathways go through into the chest. Okay, that's the pericardium. And then if we do this stretch, we bring the thumbs up like this, breathe in, breathe out, and bring them backwards. So if I can do a side view, I'm going to go like that. Stretching the thumb up and back, that's the long stretch. Just see what that's like. Okay. And then if we place our hands in the prayer position, we bring them over our head, open up the armpits, and bring the hands backwards, opening up the armpits inside and bringing the elbows out. That's a heart channel stretch. And again, you'll get the feeling for those three stretches. Any tightness or obstruction in any of those three stretches indicates that those channels need a little bit of work. So why don't we work the upper burner channels in a loop like we did with the legs. You can feel the whole upper burner then opening out and being regulated. So we're going to start off uh, with the lung. So we start off in lung one. I'll just give it close up for that. That's around here. Just, just if you follow the scapula around here into this kind of fold in the front of the arm here and just go down a little bit, you'll find that's where lung one is. You can really tap really the whole of that area there. Lungs are all to do with the autumn, and we're right in the autumn now, so it's a really good seasonal thing to do as well, activating the lungs. And then we're going to go tapping down towards the thumb. This is where the lung channel ends. And then to make a circuit, we can switch to the large intestine and work back up the large intestine channel, which takes us back up onto the shoulder. Okay, so we can just swim around. Once we get to the shoulder, we go round again into lung. switch to heart protector that's straight down towards this finger here the middle finger heart protector and then back up triple heater on the outside so we're doing the same as we did with the legs we're doing a whole circuit let's just get that triple heater channel tapped on the up top of the shoulder there which we did the other uh, just the other week and then back into lung one again now we're switching more to the heart protector, which is this area around here. We go down to the middle finger and then up again. We're going to get the arms really, really well to work here. Heart protector.
Very good. Okay, so now we've just got the heart and the small intestine we're going to do. And that's the one that comes from right underneath the armpit here and goes down here to heart three and then down into the little finger. So it's kind of tricky to get right in there. Sometimes I just press in there with my fingertips and then pick up the tapping here and work down. Again, you want to be nice and gentle with this. This is the heart channel, so it's a little bit vulnerable. Go down this way and then turn me on this way. That opens up the small intestine channel. The, it's the, the border between the red and the white skin. You can see that, but there's the white skin, there's the red skin. So just along that border there, that's where the small intestine channel is. And that's the one that goes up into here, right into the back of the shoulder. Yeah, so we've got heart. See, I'm, I'm twisting my hand this way because that opens up the heart channel. Okay, and we go down like that this way, turn around the other way. And back. Okay, brilliant. And when we've done that, we've done all of the six channels of the arm. So that should regulate the breathing and also regulate the heartbeat. So let's just see if we can feel the difference between the left and the right arm. So we've done this side. Okay, so again, we're just tuning in. Okay, and you'll notice that this area just feels so much more open now. It feels kind of lower, this shoulder feels lower. That's because of the yang channels and the whole thing just got more space in it. So we're gonna do the other side now to make sure that we're balanced out. So it's the same thing again. We go lung one, down towards the thumb. Large intestine. Yep, so we're going down the lung channel, down here, lung 10 and lung 11, right onto the thumb, and then we're switching round to large intestine 4 and large intestine channel working back up here. Very good for releasing the shoulders. All this is really good. The yin channels open up the chest this way and regulate the internal organs, and the yang channels are really good for releasing, particularly the shoulder. We've got large intestine, um, Channel, we've got triple heat, and we've got small intestine that all regulate the whole shoulder here. So there we go. So okay, so we've done the lung, large intestine, and now we're going to switch to heart protector and just make sure that this area here on the chest is nicely released. That's the way. And we go down here. And you remember this point here, palace of anxiety, it's used for really regulating the mental state, it's a really relaxing point in there. We're going to tap into there and then switch to triple heater. Back we come up onto the shoulders. And then half protector. Triple heater. Half protector. Triple heater. Okay, excellent. So it just leaves the heart. And again, if we twist the arm open this way, that's going to open up heart one and gives us a good route down to the heart channel, which ends on the little finger here and it goes round into small intestine. What I normally do is I twist around this way around and that opens up the small intestine. So this movement is the heart channel and that movement is for the small intestine. And that gives us a nice route all the way into here. And actually, right around here, we've got small intestine 9 and 10. Really important point for the shoulder. And then go round again, into the heart one again. Down. Wow, this is a real good upper burner workout. Here we go, small intestine. Lovely. And then heart. Little finger and then round like that. Brilliant. Okay, and then brushing off. Okay, now what should happen <laughs> is we should find that that breathing 
um, into the dantian suddenly will take on a completely different feeling because we will have the lungs able to descend the chi. Okay, so we've got three main things we need to think about with the breathing. We need to have that connection with the earth, that solid feeling in the legs that we had before when we worked the middle burner channels and the kidney channel. Must have this middle burner nice and released so the diaphragm can release down. But we also need this open so that we can bring the breath in. So let's put it all together and see what it feels like. Okay, we're going to put the hands on the low down chin and we're going to do three breaths and just see how it's changed from just like 45 minutes ago when we first checked in with our breath. Okay, so opening up kidney one, relaxing the legs, feeling them solid on the ground, thinking right down into the earth just like roots going right down into the earth. Relaxing the middle burner, just bring the breath and awareness into here, just releasing that. And then finally, tuning into the lungs and the heart area. Oh, feeling of openness there from the, all the going we've done. And let's combine it. So keeping that nice awareness of grounding, opening, you know, bring the breath in. Whoa, okay, hold it, feel the connection with the legs, relax, slow exhalation. Okay, now can you feel on that exhalation just how much more comfortable it is in the upper burner? And that's because the heart protector particularly and the lung channels, we've worked those. Okay, let's just experience that again, connecting down with through kidney one, breathing in. Hold it, and then breathing out, slowly breathing out. Okay, very comfortable, isn't it? So let's try it one more time, breathing in. Okay, how about that? What an amazing change in just like 45 minutes of exercises. So now what, what I thought we could do now is let's just check into those three burners again, just like we did 45 minutes ago. And what I'd like you to do is just scan through the three burners and just notice changes that have occurred. And also, if you had to pick one now, as being kind of the loudest one or the one you notice more? Would it have shifted from your original choice? How's it changed? Interesting. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we've got plenty of time for point of the week and to get those yang channels open because the yang channels in the head, really important for keeping that alignment there, keeping everything open, Calming the mind. So what we'll do is we'll do a face routine and then we can do point of the week, which I think you can, you may have better guess what it is. I know that uh, Kat did gallbladder one last week. So we're gonna, it's gonna be somewhere on the gallbladder channel. <laughs> so, okay, so let's uh, start off with doing the face routine. And I'm going to, first of all, to stroke forehead, wipe our eyes, Really relaxing the, the eyes, pressing around the temples with the palms, and we're pressing round this way towards the neck, and that's covering the triple heater channel, which we've done last month, and the gallbladder channel, which we're doing right now. So the gallbladder and the triple heater channels cover the sides of the head, and in fact, they govern the sides of the body, don't they? The sides of the arms and the sides of the legs as well. And they're really important for any side headaches and particularly good for eye strain and problems with the eyes. So we're just spreading that out, squeezing around. We do some tapping, just tapping over the bladder channel, which runs from the inside of the eye down onto the back of the neck.
I'm going to give you a close up here. Let's see if I can get in a bit closer. Yeah. In case we're tapping here. Around. So we've basically got the vertical bit here, which is the bladder channel. We've got the size, which is the triple heater and the gallbladder. And then we've got the frontal uh, points, which relate to the large intestine and the stomach. So those are the ones on that kind of front of the body. So they correspond to the front of the face. And this relates to the sinuses, frontal headaches, and things like that. So what, let's do a bit of sinus squeezing. <laughs> There's some really good points here. That's stomach three there, that's a very good point for releasing the sinuses. Also used for the eyes. Stomach three, stomach two and stomach three. Basically, if you squeeze here, you can't go wrong. Just look at your eye, center of your eyes, squeeze there. That's it. We go right round into the jaw. We've got large intestine 20 here. Great point for the breathing. So you see the stomach and large intestine points are all kind of together on the front of the face. And that's because they govern the front of the body and they're connected to the stomach and the large intestine and the arms. So we've got all these connections, really good connections. Pressing around the upper gums here, it's related to the large intestine channel. And pressing around the lower gums here related more to the stomach. Then you come up here and you've got some stomach points around the jaw. Okay, so again, because this is the beginning of the digestive tract, it's not surprising that lot there's lots of points here for the stomach and the digestion because of the anatomy of the digestive system. Okay, a bit of wiping off. Working the ears. Always good to just relax the ears and squeezing them like this, pulling down. Okay, very good. So there we are. There are all the young channels that go around here. And that means it must be time for point of the week. And I'm just going to put it up. It's a really famous poem. It's gallbladder 20, wind pool. Okay. And it's one of the main points that we use in Shiatsu for the eyes. It's awesome for the eyes. Um, and we use techniques like holding onto the eyes, working gallbladder 20, connecting up through the eyes. Um, interesting enough, from an anatomical point of view, the point's very near the visual cortex in the brain, which is around the back there somewhere. Um, so it's interesting there is that connection with the nervous system. So I thought it'd be really good to work that point. It's really good, as you can see, for the head and the eyes. It's used for all kinds of things that happen in the head, including the eye strain and dizziness and headaches and things like that. Really good place to work. And if you've got any tension around there, it's really good to release that. So wherever it is, gallbladder 20, wind pool. And if we want to look in the book here, this is one of my favorite books, Images and Functions. It says the name refers to the place where external pathogenic wind easily enters and gathers before penetrating deeper, which is always a good idea. You should wear a scarf around that area um, in the windy, windy, cold weather. Um, the point also refers to the point's location in the depression between the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscles. And you can see that indicated very clearly on this diagram. So let's just feel around the back of our head here. You'll feel the trapezius muscle is that muscle that you can feel right at the back of your head. And the sternocleidomastoid muscle is this one here uh, that runs right through on the front. And what I'll do is I'll take this off now and I'll show you on my neck where it is. Okay, so we have the sternocleidomastoid muscle here which goes round here, and you can feel that if you feel right away round, okay? And then if I do this, we've got the trapezius muscle here. This is this one that comes right up near bladder 10. And you'll feel, if you feel around, you'll feel that there's a, a big pool. It is like a big pool there, a big windy pool where the large intestine, uh, gall, a gallbladder 20 is right in that pool. And the direction is up towards the opposite eye, Okay, so you want to be a bit careful pressing it on your, on your own because you keep the arms really relaxed and everything. We can even tap that point. But let's just, put, let's just use the breath and work, work it together. So I've got my thumb in gallbladder 20. 
up towards the opposite eyes. I'm going to really relax the arms. And I'm just going to gently press in and a connect with the opposite eye. And you can probably feel a connection right the way through into the eye. If you get the angle right, it's just that kind of angle up towards the opposite eye. It's one of those points that you use to tonify the eyes if they're tired, but also if they're feeling full, it also kind of balances them out and it expels some wind and stuff that you can get in the head. So it's, once we've activated that point, it's a really good idea to get that energy moving down and out through the body. We don't want it to go back up into the head. And we can do that by squeezing down. I'm squeezing down the gallbladder channel here with the heels of my hand. So we're doing it like this. Okay. You may even like to go back up to the other part of the gallbladder channel. Remember gallbladder one is here. Um, to come back here, go back to the eyes and stroke down. If you feel any movement of energy up towards the eyes, it's a good idea to get that moving down and away from the body like this by stroking, opening, relaxing the jaw and squeezing downwards. Brilliant. Okay, very good. I'm going to squeeze the SCM muscle, that's the sternocleidomastoid muscle here, just to get that stomach uh, channel open, which connects to the front of the body. Brilliant. Okay, so now it's time to connect up those yang channels in the head all the way down and out. And we'll do it in very general terms. Gallbladder, which goes down here. Very good idea to tap the top of the shoulders, get the shoulders really relaxed, tap them downwards. And we'll probably, next week, we'll do another point of weakness around this area here. It's really important. And then sides of the body, gallbladder. And then down where we've been before today, down and then down to the feet. Okay, so it's just getting that energy down and then when we talk about the arms we talk about triple heater which is the connected channel with the gallbladder bring it down and then out so you see what we're doing we're bringing that side energy from the eyes through um, gallbladder 20 the wind pull point down into the shoulders and then out down through the arms brushing brushing up and now, really good idea to shake out any tension that we've released in the upper body. And what I like to do is put feet shoulder width apart, bend forwards like this, okay? and then very gently start to shake downwards and shake any tension from the head out, down through the neck and shoulders, and out through the fingers. And you can put some breath into it, so it's like this. A shake of the shoulder blades, keeping the jaw relaxed, okay, and then shaking out, shaking out the joints, shaking out the knees and the ankles, all the way down, wiping the eyes again, making sure that all that, all that energy in the head, any tension in the head and the jaw is nicely released down the body and out through the feet. Okay, so there we have it. Wind pull, gallbladder 20, a really important point for the eyes, really useful to, to know. And certainly if you get any in your eyes, you want to gently massage that area, keep that area as free as you can, really helps with the whole health of the head, um, particularly the eyes, and uh, also kind of the whole size of the head, side headaches. Okay, excellent. So we've just got five minutes left to finish up and get everything all integrated together. But let's just check in again one more time with the breathing and see how that's doing. <clears throat> so we've opened up kidney one. Let's get back into that feeling of kidney one opened up. Get 
back into that feeling of the breath, um, of the energy going down through Kitty One, deep into the earth. We're relaxing the hips, knees, and the legs. And just remember that feeling of tapping, opening up the legs that we did in the beginning of the session. Checking out, make sure there's no tension in any of those joints. Shaking out any superficial tension we might have in the knees or the hips. Okay, and then we're going to go check in with the middle burner. Is that nice and released? We did all that stretching and turning and tapping to release this middle burner. And then we did a very good session today on the upper burner with all of the channels opening up, getting that breath in. And now finally, we've opened up all the yang channels, brightening the eyes, releasing the neck through gallbladder 20, shaking out through the body. So let's just get in touch with all those aspects of what we've done today. And then finally, before we do the final breathing, let's do three breaths and see how easy it is to get that breath down into the lower dantian and get that regulating feeling of the exhalations. I'm placing my hand over the lower dantian again today, opening up Kitty One. And we're feeling the head top being connected upwards towards the heavens. Okay, and let's see what it's like now. So we're going to breathe in. Hold it. And slowly breathe out. How about that? Okay, very, very different. Let's do two more breaths. Very good. Okay, one more. Breathing in. How about that? Okay, what a difference. Okay, and that just shows you how much you can achieve by that internal regulation of all those three burning spaces, getting those channels activated and also connecting down with the earth and connecting with the heavens. So now what we can do now is we can integrate all of those three things um, into a final breathing exercise taken from Tai Chi. We're just going to do it three times, connecting with the earth and moving like this. Okay, so here we go. We're going to breathe in, connect with the earth. Slow exhalation, floating up, connecting with the heavens. Connecting with the earth. Connecting with the heavens. Connecting with the earth. And connecting with the heavens. Okay, how about that? How about a great, what a great way to set ourselves up for the rest of the week. I'm just going to quickly have a look at the chat and see what's been going on. Oh my goodness, what an active chat. There we go. Thank you, Dinah, for looking after the chat. Hope everyone's enjoyed this Wednesday. What a massive move we've had to the middle burner. I was really quite shocked by that. That's a massive switch around. And hopefully today we've managed to certainly get that freed up. Um, and also, just keep that grounding going, everyone, um, and uh, we're going to be fine. And thoughts to the American election from all of us over in Europe. And, uh, yeah, just uh, have a great week. And I'll see you again next week for part three of the gallbladder. We're getting towards the end of our epic journey, um, and we do another point of the week. And so look after yourself for the next week, and we'll see you then. I'll just put a heart in the chat to everyone. There we go. Okay, it's time to go. I've got to get ready for my next time. Thank you, Dinah, and thanks, everyone. And we'll uh, see you next week.
Well done, Jane, for avoiding that panic attack. See you next week. Next week. <laughs>